Good evening all, Tosh coming at you. Tuesday, October 30th, just about 8.15 p.m. I uh, got home from work and we flipped the old uh, heater on a couple hours ago and we managed to make it up to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It's about 15 or 16 degrees Celsius, so nice and comfortable out in the garage. And I've had the uh, can of short strand uh, fiberglass filler kind of sitting in the neighborhood of the uh, front of the electric heater just to warm up a little bit, make that a little bit more uh, manageable when we go to mix it. I think what we're going to do tonight is uh, we're not going to bother fixing the rear fender tonight. I think I'll just do some body work tonight. And we'll start laying some of that short strand fiberglass on the bottom of this uh, trunk lid uh, to get that looking a little bit better. So I'm going to pop that off and uh, we'll put it onto a stand. I might do a little bit of adjustment work on it. And by adjustment, I mean bending. Uh, I'm going to try to bend this corner in a little bit, just a little bit of force. Just see if I can get that to uh, kick in a little bit uh, closer to the actual body tub. So I'm just, like I said, going to uh, apply some brute force, put some of my weight into it, and see if I can bend that a little bit without uh, damaging it too much. Other than that, it seems to fit pretty good. And uh, so we'll uh, do what I said. Take it off, adjust it, put it back on, check it for fit. Take it off again, put it on the stand, and do some body work. That's what we're up to. All right, just a quick look at that uh, nasty brazing at the bottom of the, uh, the trunk lid. So we're gonna give it another uh, quick uh, rough up with about 40 grit on a DA before we do a skim coat of uh, fiberglass filler over this area here, just to smooth things out a little bit. And then we'll uh, probably do a scratch coat of uh, just a regular Bondo over the entire trunk lid, just to make sure things are uh, nice and smooth so this area looks pretty good I don't see any visible dents up in this area so it's uh, actually not too bad a shape considering the shape of this car overall so uh, the top of this could look like this so consider ourselves lucky I guess anyway we'll go ahead like I said we'll have got the compressor charging up we'll get the DA out scratch this up and we'll apply our first coat of uh, short strand fiberglass all right, just coming up to 9.30, nothing too exciting, but I've got the uh, first coat of fiberglass filler on there and uh, just blocked a little bit with uh, 80 grit. Uh, we're probably gonna stop there and we're probably gonna start adding uh, a coat of Bondo on top of that and then block that down. There's some obvious low spots in here and here and here and down in here that need to be filled, but we'll look after that with the Bondo. Again, I just primarily use the uh, fiberglass over where there's been any brazing or welding done just because the fiberglass is uh, waterproof versus the Bondo. So there's less chance of the uh, weld lines uh, rusting out prematurely. So that's why I go with the uh, fiberglass filler versus the Bondo first. For those of you who might uh, be asking the question. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, 9.30, don't want to kill myself out here. I've got... Uh, I'm extremely busy at work these days, so um, i got to save some energy for the, uh, the real work and uh, get out there and get out here and treat this as a hobby and enjoy it and not, uh, not get too overwhelmed out here. So we're going to call it a night. We'll get back out here uh, probably not tomorrow since tomorrow's Halloween and I'll be giving candy out at least early in the evening. So you never know. We might get out here for a, a quick power hour after Halloween or we might get out here on... Uh, towards the weekend, um, if we can. All right, we'll see you then, thanks. All right, Wednesday the 31st of October and Halloween night here in Newmarket, Ontario. Just to look down the street, trees are starting to look pretty bare. You recall I mentioned about this tree losing its leaves by the end of the week. And you can see that most of them are on the ground now. Still got a pretty good color at the front of the house. So that's still looking okay. But uh, the magnolia is looking a little worse for wear. I'm sure those leaves will be gone by the end of this week as well. The pumpkin carved. And out on display, so everything's ready to go here. We've got the candy inside. Ready to go. Nice assortment. For the little kitties. Normally we got probably around 70 kids or so in this uh, neighborhood. Yeah, there's quite a few kids around, so. Anyway, they should be here shortly, I would say probably within the next half hour or so we should be starting to get a throng of kids. Fortunately, it stopped raining. It rained most of the day today. As you can see, there's still water on the truck.
and puddles on the ground. But it uh, right now has stopped raining for the moment, so that'll be good for the kids and for the parents that are accompanying them around the neighborhood. That's it for tonight. Be back tomorrow. All right, guys. Saturday, November the third, just after 12 noon, and we're back on the TR250 project today after spending yesterday in the kitchen and we're going to pick up where we left off and that was uh, applying some filler to this uh, boot lid uh, as you recall I've got the uh, first coat of fiberglass filler on the bottom of the trunk here we're just going to rough this up a little bit with the DA and then we're going to continue on adding some uh, just regular Bondo over the top of this and then working that out and we'll start working on the, uh, the top part of this bonnet as well there's a few little dents here and there We'll scuff this up and clean this up before we go ahead and just, uh, we're not going to put any fiberglass on the top side of this, we're just going to go with regular Bondo on the top side. But there's a few areas I need to clean up, a little bit of surface rust here for example, that we're going to uh, scrub off with the DA before we go ahead and apply that filler. So let's get to work. Nothing too exciting, but uh, stuff that's got to be done nonetheless. Okay, we've got a scratch coat done on the entire uh, trunk lid now. So we'll uh, break out the uh, DA, we'll uh, scrub off the top layer with 40 grit, then we'll progress down to uh, 80 grit, and eventually get down to uh, 180 to 220. That's the plan anyway. We'll probably uh, institute a little bit of guide coat once we knock it down a little bit to see where we got highs and lows. We're hoping that most of this bondo will come back off, with the exception of the bottom edge, which we know had uh, quite a bit of work done to it. I'm hoping most of the bondo will come off the top uh, part of this uh, of this lid. So we shall see once we get to sanding. Okay, back to the GoPro. I know the audio is not so good on this camera, but the other camera's memory card is full, so we'll just uh, continue on. So while we were waiting for this to dry over here, I figured we'd start working on this fender area back here and fixing this gap in the flange. And what we were going to do, or what we planned to do, is a bit of a cut and shut. So we're going to cut along top of the fender, and then we're going to uh, move the uh, flange over a little bit and then refill that with welds. So that's the plan. So I'm not sure how far we'll go up, probably up to about here or so. And uh, then, I said, like I said, we'll uh, break the welder out and uh, weld that closed. Hopefully that should straighten that flange out and we'll be good to go. All right, you want to talk about Frankenstein. Now, Lynn mentioned the word Frankenstein on his repair yesterday. Well, I've got the stitches here to prove it. I've got a bit of a Frankenstein here myself. Anyway, that gap is, gap is closing up. We just got to be careful when we, uh, when we close this that it doesn't open up anymore. Again, there's no fasteners holding this, so it's going to pull that a little tighter once we get this uh, fender installed fully, but uh, if we can weld this up and keep the gap where it's at, I'll be happy with that. And remember, there's going to be a piece of fender beading that goes in there that's going to hide that anyway. So we'll continue on stitching this together, and uh, we're waiting for that to dry still, so once we'll, uh, we'll go back and forth on these two little uh, concurrent projects that we have going on. I thought I'd just give you a quick shot of that. Okay, we just done an initial knockdown with uh, 40 grit on the DA, and we're switching to a long block now. So we've got 80 grit on the long block, and uh, we'll see how good we can get this. It's going to take quite a while. So I'm going to be standing here probably for the rest of the afternoon at least, but we'll get it. Okay, we're making progress on the uh, top side of the uh, trunk lid and we're going to start uh, working on the face of it so we'll get that to look a little bit better. So I thought I'd give you a quick look of the uh, progress and we'll continue on. Alright, just coming up to uh, 4 p.m. and uh, looking not too bad. We're going to grab the guide coat now and give it a quick coat of guide coat and continue to sand. You can see I've got a few high spots in the rear here and uh, a little bit of highs on the uh, top of the boot. Let's kind of be expected on this car. Anyway, we'll uh, spray it with a bit of uh, guide coat and see where we get to. Alright, just coming up to uh, 6 p.m. and we've uh, mounted the trunk lid back on the car. It's actually looking pretty good. There's a few areas that we still need to fix up. Down in this corner, for example, it's got a little bit of guide coat left on there. Where the uh, lock mechanism is, or the handle, there's a little, little bit of a low spot there that we've got to fix up. And on the other corner as well, there's a little area, but for the most part, 
It looks uh, pretty darn good and it fits pretty darn good, so we're happy with that. Anyway, we're going to stop here for tonight. It's uh, an early night out here, unfortunately, but I'm traveling tomorrow. I'm, uh, I'm off to Washington, D.C. for uh, three or four days. So unfortunately, I won't be back out here in the garage probably till at least Thursday. So we will uh, stop the video here and we'll pick up where we left off when we get back in the garage next week. See you then. All right, guys and girls, Friday, November the 9th, and we're just coming up to 5.15 in the p.m. And uh, back in the garage after uh, spending uh, Sunday through Wednesday in Washington, D.C. on a business trip. And happy to be back in the garage. I took the day off on Thursday. But we'll endeavor to pick up where we left off um, when we were out here last, which would have been, I think, last Saturday, and when we were working on this uh, rear trunk lid. And we've got it looking not too bad. We've got a few little low areas that we need to fill in here and there. But for the most part, it's pretty good. So what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to start to work on these uh, rear leg areas here, where it's uh, pretty roughly shaped. And we're going to start putting some filler down in the corners down here and down in the other corner over here. It's a little dark over there. Sorry about that. I'll have to bring the spotlight over and put it in this area. And then we'll start working on uh, forming out this rear bottom valence a little bit and match it up with the curvature of the uh, trunk lid. There's a little little uh, dip in here that we've got to take care of, I know for sure. But for the most part, it looks pretty darn good, considering we fashioned that, or uh, Lynn and I fashioned that from, uh, from hand and welded that in in three different pieces. So it actually looks pretty good, I think. Anyway, we'll uh, get to work. We've had the heat on out in the garage uh, since this morning, so it's a comfortable 20 degrees. I think it's about 20 degrees Celsius out here. Yeah, 20, just over 20 degrees Celsius, so 70 degrees Fahrenheit. We've got another little light in the shop that's helping out with some light out here. Although I could have it farther back in this area, it's still pretty dark. Anyway, could do it a little bit larger garage, but uh, we'll have to make do with what we got. Anyway, we'll get the filler out and start working on these bottom edges. We'll rough them up with some 40 grit, uh, first of all, before we apply some fiberglass filler, and then we'll move on to the next step, which is the regular Bondo. Okay, we're making progress on this bottom left-hand corner, or the driver's side corner, and we started to do a little bit of work in the trunk on this uh, rear shelf that was pretty uh, in pretty bad shape. It was pretty pitted, so we've done a coat of uh, fiberglass first, and then we're just going to try to smooth it out with some Bondo. I did put another uh, scratch coat on the top of this uh, trunk lid here on the bottom to get rid of that low spot that was in there, but I haven't sanded it down yet, so that's another job that we've got to do. I'm thinking of uh, switching gears here. I'm taking a break from sanding and uh, working on patching up this, you're com continuing to patch up this uh, rear fender with that little cut and shut project. So I think what I'll do is I'll uh, break out the welder for a little bit, do a little bit of welding, um, and let that cool down and then probably go back to, uh, to sanding. I'm having to be a bit of a Michelangelo on this car, let me tell you, with the Bondo. So anyway, we'll uh, make it the best we can with what we got. All right, Saturday morning, just about uh, 9 a.m. And the first thing I'm going to do today is run up to the welding store and get my small MIG bottle uh, refilled, as this one is just about uh, done, so I don't want to run out of gas. So we'll do that this morning and uh, pick up a few other items. I'm going to pick up some more uh, 40 grit sandpaper to uh, help me uh, continue on with the bodywork with this car. And uh, probably a few other little things. I think there's a work light that's on sale that I'm interested in taking a look at. So we'll uh, head up there and have a look and we'll be back. All right, just coming up to 3 o'clock on Saturday, November 10th. We're uh, kind of multitasking today. I'm actually uh, working today, uh, not on the car. I'm actually working doing my real job. But I thought I'd pop out to the garage here and uh, have a look and maybe take a break. Do a little uh, power hour, stress relief, whatever you want to call it. So uh, I did make it back from the, uh, the welding shop and picked up some uh, more MIG gas. I picked up a new spool of wire. I picked up my 40 grit uh, sandpaper from my uh, local uh, Canadian tire store. Just some 40 grit. Um, just some flat stock and some sticky back for my uh, DA. And I picked up uh, a few little, uh, few pieces of steel rod. And I'm planning on using that in this area here. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see it or not. But you can see how ragged this edge is here on the inside of the A post. I don't know what to look to cut this with a blowtorch or something. But you can see there's also quite a bit of a gap between this edge and the, uh, the fender lip. So 
I was going to weld in some rod along here and uh, make that look a little bit better. So yeah, that's what that uh, project's going to be. So the, the welding is far from done on this car. We still need to do certain areas. So that will be one of them. Anyway, we're going to continue on with the uh, filler work on the rear of the car. We're going to continue sort of stitching this fender up. I've been sort of uh, doing little bits here and there as a, as a little break from the uh, sanding work and uh, trying to keep it uh, a little bit cool and try not to warp it. So it's looking a little worse for wear, but it's getting there. Anyway, uh, we're going to continue sanding this area back down in here, and that's where I put the last application of filler in to try to get rid of a low spot there. So we'll clean that up a little bit and see if we need any more filler. We might even actually throw a little guide coat on that area just to help us out. And then we'll continue working on this area down here in the corner and see if we can get that looking a little bit better. All right, that's it for now. We'll come back in a bit. Okay, we've got the fender welded up now and I'm just going to take it off the car and grind it down. And maybe we'll do a little bit of body work on the fender itself while we have it off on the stands. We won't finish the body work, but at least I can do a quick scratch coat over some of the welded areas on this fender to get it looking a little bit better before we progress on with the regular Bondo. So that's what we'll do now is we'll take the fender back off. It'll also allow me the ability to uh, start sort of fixing these areas in the back here where they butt up here where I've got to do some filler work in this back corner here. Oh, I can't basically sand it properly uh, and fill it up basically with Bondo if this fender is joined there. So I'm going to take it off for that reason as well. So we'll go ahead and do that and we'll come back once we fit it back up. All right, it's Sunday, November the 11th, and just coming up to 4 p.m. It was another real work day for me today, so I was just able to get out here now. And all we're really planning on doing out here today is just doing some cleaning and sweeping and putting tools away and uh, that kind of stuff. That's usually my, uh, my Sunday chore, just to get everything organized out here. Um, I spent the morning watching some Remembrance Day ceremonies today from across Canada and from overseas. Pretty touching. 100th uh, anniversary of the end of the uh, First World War. Anyway, out in the garage, and you can see that we've got a red fender on the car. We'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. All right, the story of the red fenders. So let me, uh, let me step back by saying that I did uh, do a lot of work on this fender that came off the uh, 250 that I'm working on. And as you can see, and I've showed you many, many times, how much work's been done on this fender and in actuality it's a TR6 fender that's had bits of a TR4, 4A or TR250 fender grafted onto it to make it look like a TR250 fender but in actuality it's a TR6 fender so it's uh, seen better days to be gentle on it let's say um, I had been working on fixing up this top flange area and uh, got that looking not too bad. It still uh, warped a little bit on me when I was welding up that seam. And I was actually doing some work on the inside of the fender here, just uh, putting a new piece in there and a new piece up front. But this whole flange has had so much work done on it, and it's probably been. Uh, probably five or six different pieces put into this flange so it's no wonder why this fender doesn't fit very good and why it looks like it does. So anyway enough about that fender. I was getting pretty frustrated with it yesterday and decided that it was going to pr probably take me as much time in body work to get this fender looking half decent as it would to try and modify these really really nice fenders. They're California fenders that I've had for some time. Uh, modify these fenders to fit. The driver's side that's on the car now, and it's got one bolt in there just holding it up, is going to take significantly less modification to make fit than the passenger side will. But um, as you can see it lines up pretty well here with the door opening but when I move to the back it's a little long. <laughs> So I think the fender can move up a little bit and that's going to entail me playing around with the flange, sort of relocating the flange on the inside of the fender. So that's going to be detaching the flange and moving it uh, back a little bit so the fender can move up towards the front of the car. 
I do have a little bit of room to work with here on the sill. You can see the body line and then obviously you need to make that fit a little bit better at the bottom as well. But I have less aversion to uh, do whatever it takes to make these fenders work versus trying to fix this thing to, to make it look half decent. Even if I was to make this thing look half decent, I still have the issue of this fender being off a of TR6 and the bumper mount being in the wrong location. And if you watch my old videos, there's quite a significant difference between where the body lines are on the TR6 fender versus where they are on the TR4, 4A and 250 fender. So it's not something I'm gonna work on today. <clears throat> like I said, I'm really only out here to clean up the garage and get all the junk put away and out of the car just so I can start fresh the next time I'm out here. But in order to get this red fender to work, like I said, there's not only those flange modifications that need to happen, but there's a lot of modifications here just on the mounts, for example. There's, there, none of the mounting holes match that's what's currently drilled in the flange of the body tub. So that means I'll have to go back and weld up the old holes and create new holes, first of all. So I wanted to do that before I continue any further on my body work because obviously if I'm going to be welding on the body tub, that's going to affect where I have Bondo laid. So in some cases, I'm going to have to undo what I've done as far as the body work is concerned already. And I haven't done much, so I think that's probably a good opportunity for me to sort of step back and then uh, fix what I can while I can. Fender looks actually pretty good here at the rear. Again, it needs to go up a touch towards the front, and I think if it does, it's going to match that rear pretty well. So I don't have any concerns there. So like I said, I think this will be the easier of the two fenders to fit, but this fender is by far the worst fender um, between the passenger and driver's side uh, of the ones that came off the car anyway. So hopefully we'll be able to fix the uh, passenger side fender to fit just as well as we can, we think we can get the uh, fender to fit on the driver's side. So there's the update with the red fenders. I'm sure some of you guys are cheering or saying why why didn't you go with those fenders in the first place? Well, I didn't want to have to cut or uh, modify perfectly good uh, rear fenders for this car when I have a TR4 project uh, sort of waiting down the line that can use these fenders as well. But I think this car deserves it, so uh, and it's worth it. So I think we'll go ahead and do what it takes to uh, fit these fenders to this car. So enough about the fenders. That's it for now. We're going to clean the garage, and maybe we'll come back with... Uh, one more quick update and then we'll, uh, again, I don't have much to upload and some of the stuff that I upload will have been changed. Uh, you'll see I've changed my mind by the end of the video. Um, anyway, we'll upload what upload do I have so you know I've been out in the garage when I can. That's about it for now. Oh yeah, one more thing about the red fenders. You can actually see as far as the gap is concerned. Again, they're just, I've got one bolt in and a pair of vice grips holding the rear of the fender. But you can see how good the factory fender fits the body tub. It's a little bit uh, of a problem here. I think that's actually with the flange on the car. You can see it bows in a little bit. But uh, that's pretty darn tight all the way along. So pretty happy with that. That was what I was trying to get to with the other fender. And it was just uh, getting to be pretty frustrating. So anyway, let's uh, give you a quick shot of that. While I continue cleaning the garage. And a quick shot of the uh, passenger side fitment. It's pretty high here in the front and needs to go down. And then the problem is I've got nowhere even close to match on the bottom with the sill and this body line. And the fender won't push anymore because it's interfering with the bottom of the sill. And I believe, if I recall, when I put the door on, I believe the door interferes with the fender. So it's a mess down in this area. So, you know what, I'm even willing to uh, go as far as replacing the sill if it needs to. I didn't replace the sill on this side because it was in fairly good shape, other than it being uh, probably out of the uh, right location, <laughs> based on how this fender fits. Looks to me like the sill should almost be a little bit lower. But uh, anyway, I do have another sill. Again, it's a lot of work to undo all of this. But like I said, if I have to, I have to, and I'll go ahead and do it. But uh, Anyway, I think what we'll do first is we're going to have a, a consult with uh, Alin. We're going to, I was talking to him about this last night on Messenger, and I was telling him that I was thinking of trying to get these fenders to fit, and uh, this one needs a lot of work to make this one work. Driver's side, not so bad, but this one, again, 
it's going to be high in the front. The gap's okay, then it's long in the back as well, so it actually needs to go forward, just like the other one. And if I look at the body line here, it doesn't look like it should go forward, but uh, anyway, it needs to in order for this to line up in the back. It only needs to go up uh, probably an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch on the back, so not too far. But uh, that's a lot of movement if it really throws out this line up here and starts interfering with the, uh, with the door closing. So lots to think about. But anyway, we're going to leave it there, like I said, and we'll clean the garage. Anyway, I think that's it for now. We'll upload what I got, and you guys are probably laughing by now, but uh, we'll upload what we got, and we'll get back here, out here, hopefully during the week at some point. I've got a, a busy week at work, and consecutive weeks at work, so I won't be out here a lot, but uh, I'll get out here when I can. All right, thanks for watching.